former IBF cruiserweight champion of the world, James Waring. And uh, at the IBF convention in St. Petersburg, Florida, um, James, thanks for taking the time to come up to the convention, first of all. Um, I re I'm really glad that they, they invited me here. I, I had a great time. I saw great people. I saw uh, ex-champions, and, and I met uh, Mar Marvin uh, and the Camel. first yeah. Camo. Yeah. I met Marvin Camo, the first Cruiserweight World Champion. He's a real nice guy. I talked to him today about at least for 30, 40 minutes a day. Wow. Yeah. That's great. So he was the guy that kind of uh, 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 started things off in your weight division as a cruiserweight and in this organization. Uh, yes, and, and I'm glad I met him. It was, it was somebody that I, I never, I heard of him, but I never, I, I, I might have saw him on TV, but I would, I won't have much, was a boxing fan anyway. You know, mm -hmm. it was something that I did to be a better, to be a better kickboxer. The next thing you know, I was boxing. Right. Now, so speaking of that, I wanted to go back to kind of the beginnings of your boxing you career, that? which, which actually, um, started off in other sports, in um, kickboxing you mentioned. You were a world champion in that sport before you got into boxing. Uh, yes, yes I was. I, I was a um, um, four-time uh, kickboxing world champion and, um, and my friends always told me, he said, James, you did everything you could do in kickboxing, you should box. But I was, I was scared. I was scared to box because I, I didn't believe that I was that good. But then I started um, sparring with a guy named Jeff Sims and Trevor Burbage, and, um, and I sparred heavyweight guy, Jose Roberto, you know, and, and I, I sparred different guys. And I, I made it look easy, but I don't know what I was doing, but, but it was easy, you know? But them guys were really good, and them guys, them guys told you, boxing. Nah, I was a little scared of boxing. So that's interesting that you were already a world champion in a different sport, similar, where you use your fists and your feet. But, uh, but that you had a little fear about boxing. Did you uh, change trainers and get a, an actual boxing trainer when you crossed over, or did you stay with the same crew you had? No, I, I, I went to the boxing gym, me and my wife, and we learned how, I, I learned how to box from scratch. I had to start from scratch, you know what I'm saying? But I did have amateur ba you know, boxing. I did, do, but I did like three fights, you know, fought with the college in 1976. And I learned uh, a, a little bit about that. I did pretty good. I, I was uh, two and one, mm -hmm. and uh, I fought great. I fought one guy was real good from South Dade, um, um, you know, from South Dade. He was like a Golden Gloves ch champion. Everybody was shocked, or, you know, how good I did. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know. But I was, you know, when you're ignorant, you, you don't know better. You just do it, you know. Right. Do right. That. So when you crossed over, did you? walk away from competing in kickboxing or did you still kind of uh, have fights in, in both I, you know you know I had fight in both you know when when I when I when I uh, turned pro I think it was 85 or 83 I forgot 85, what it was. 85 yeah and then I, I had two fights or three fights and then and then they think you know but nobody nobody want to fight me then when I, I was still kickboxing and then they didn't have the, the great thing that we have now the internet Mm -hmm. the, the tapes and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And guys said, oh man, James Warren, you know, he, he's, he's a guy to fight because he didn't fight in two years or three years. Mm -hmm. But I was kickboxing all the time, you know? Right. And then when I, when I went to, back to boxing, and they guy said, man, this guy, had, he had one fight in two years or three fights in two years. He said, get my schedule, it, it, it was crazy, you know? But I was kickboxing. And I was, then I went to boxing, it was easy. And I was coaching uh, boxing. I was coaching boxing at Tropical Park. And that what made me a lot better fighter. Because when you coach it, you learn it. And you understand what the coach is saying, you know? Yeah. And I then had great coaches. I had a coach named Ali Rizway, and I had a coach named Dave Clark. And Dwayne Sissom, he was the director for the boxing program in, in down in um, Miami-Dade County. And um, he he started the program out, and he was a great, great, great coach. He did a really great, you know, good job. Mm -hmm. Now I noticed in, in only your second pro fight, you went to the Bahamas for a scheduled ten rounder. <laughs> but did you did you take a fight?
for that many rounds because you had had such an extensive background in kickboxing, you didn't think the distance was going to be a problem? Uh, yes, I, 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 I took that fight because I was a little cocky too. I was a little... You got rid of the fear, obviously. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, 10, 10 rounds, but I thought it would be a lot easier. But you know what? Boxing, boxing guys, it's, it's a little different, man. You know, in kickboxing, we fought two-minute rounds, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and kicking because it's a lot of different things, lifting your leg up high. Sure. Throwing your hands was it's, 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 it's a lot smaller. Lift, kicking your legs is, is, is a little harder. And um, into the boxing part, it was about the third or fourth round. Man, I, I was tired, man. I was beat. He caught me some punches, knocked me down, I think once or twice. And and I thought I was losing the fight. Be honest with you, I thought I, I, thought I was losing the fight from round one to round, I think, eight, and then the fight stopped. Mm. And it, it says nine, but yeah, nine, maybe uh, in between. Yeah. And what happened, uh, I asked my trainer, I said, I'm winning? He said, no, you're not, you're not winning. I said, okay, then stop it, because I, I didn't want to get hurt. And mm -hmm. then, after the fight, the, 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 after the fight, the trainer from another fighter came over and said, man, we're so glad you stopped, because you were winning the fight. Uh -huh. I looked at him, I said, what? He said, yeah. I said, no, I, I thought he was winning because he knocked me down. He got an eight count, mm -hmm. but I was still winning the fight. Mm -hmm. You know, and he said, no, on, on the cards, you will win the fight. You know, and the, the guy who I fought was well, a great fighter. He was yeah. a good fighter from Bahamas. That's yeah. yeah. Yeah, and but you know what? It was a good experience. I'm glad I got it early, and it never happened again. Mm -hmm. I make sure that I was in great shape and, 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 and make sure that I did everything impossible to never, never think negative of myself again. So it didn't discourage you? It did not discourage loss. me at all. No, it didn't discourage me at all. Now, after that, you went on quite a streak, and after only a grand total of 12 fights with 11-1 and one record, you found yourself in a position to fight for the vacant IBF Cruiserweight title. How did that come about as far as your ranking and management and maneuverings to get that title shot with with such little boxing experience. You know what? You can look on two fights. I don't know what name it is, but I know it's, it's two names on 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 that uh, on that rocket mm -hmm. on my rocket yep. that we made up. Yep. You had you yeah. had Craig Bojanowski and Nate Miller, who were two world ranked guys. Yeah. And those were your last two fights going into the uh, title fight. Yeah, but I, I didn't have that many fights. I mean, if, if right. You, Eleven and one is your. Is your yeah, record. but if you know, but what, what, what I'm saying is. Before I, before I fought them other guys, I add on two, I add on two fights that never happened. I really had less fights than that, uh -huh. you know. And back then, you could do that because they didn't have no, no book or record to who you fought and where you fought it at. Okay. And, you know, I, we we add like at least I think it was two fights on there that I, I never had. The name was on there, mm. and we and, and we never had. But what happened? Them guys saw they they, they saw my record. And what they did when they, when they saw my record, they said, "Wait a minute!" And then they saw the time that I ain't have fights in. Like I think you look at the look you at had the dates. A three year gap from eighty six to eighty. Yeah, and, and these, these guys who were saying that, oh, well, we can fight him. Man. He, and he's a good fighter. He got a loss. He got one loss, but he ain't fighting like you know in, in a year or six months. Mm -hmm. You know, you know that's fighting them. But I was training in the gym with all the good good guys of boxing, Trevor Burger and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I was training with guys, you know. Right. And I never got hit because I, I was a runner. I was a runner. Right. And that's why when I when they, they called me in like a two weeks notice, you know, I, they don't know. I was training every day anyway. Yeah. You know, I was training. Kickbox was, was, was harder too. In a way, I was training, kicking, and punching. And, and they came, I took the fight. I was scared. Mm -hmm. But I took the fight. Yeah. And, you know, but um, I, I took it and I, and I beat them guys. And I got, you know, yeah, I was, you were in the right position. I right position. So, so, so first you won the North American Boxing Federation title with a decision against Nate Miller, who would later on go on to become a world champion himself. Uh, that Nate Miller fight, I, I would have pulled out. I mean, they called me at two weeks notice too, and I was scared because I watched his videotape and said, "Man, this guy's really good." And I said, "No, man, these guys setting me." I said, "These guys setting me up." And and, and uh, Lewis Cubas was my uh, manager. And he and, and, and the way he was talking, and he didn't know I was gonna pull out. My other friends I had, well, these guys were jewelry, they were jurors maker. They, they they sold gold and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And I told him, man, you know what? I'm gonna pull it. I'm, I'm pull out in this fight, man. I'm, I don't I don't think I want to fight. 
he looked at me. He said, James, you're fighting this fight. You're not, you're not quitting. You're not going to let him pull out this fight. I said, no, man, I don't think so. Man, we come in there. We're going to Chicago. We're going to Chicago. You're fighting this guy. And I'm going to pull out. I was going to pull out for that fight. And then when I got to the airport, these guys came after me at the airport. And I saw them. They came at the same time. And I saw them. They, it was, it was, it was uh, two Cuban guys they, from Cuba. But, but if they live in, in, in Miami for a long time with, you know, with the mother named Jose. Both of them named Jose. Right, mm -hmm. and they, they were walking down a, a, a out of the uh, uh, gate, they come down the hallway, and they had these black little, you know, the black little hats that them old time fighters the, the manager wear. He did. He was walking down. They look, they look real. I still see him now. I can still see him walking down. Right. Yeah. And I said, Wow, these guys look, you know, you know, real good. Right. Yeah. And um, and I said, Man, I, and I feel good because I, I had some friends there. But I had great trainers. I had Dave Clark and I had Ali Risway. And Ali Risway, the, all the stories that you hear about, um, the stories that he telling me about his, his fighters. Mm -hmm. and, he, and then that, I had great experience coaches that had been around. And they say, they always tell me, James, you're really good. But I, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe that. I didn't believe that I could hit the hard, be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You know? And, um, but, it approved it, you know, and Ali Rivers is a champ. Stop moving too much. Stop hitting and running out of there. So I don't want to stay there, you know. And uh, with Nate Miller, when, when, when Nate Miller, when I fought him, the first round, I was moving. I mean, I was moving fast, you know. He was throwing punches, and I was whoosh. And I, and I hear... I'm hearing the, uh, the the director of boxing laughing. That was remember um, in uh, what guy name? He was, he was referee, Larry, Larry Hazard, right? Okay. But he 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 was the um, uh, he was the the, the 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 director of boxing back then. Yeah, the commissioner I, in New he, Jersey. Yeah, yeah, and I heard him. I heard, heard him laughing. I heard him la laughing, right? Mm -hmm. And I I don't know what happened. And about the end of the round, I stopped and I threw a fat punch, jab right hand, and I caught him with the right hand, and he went down. And I, I'm telling you, my, my right hand, or I always practice my right hand, like on the wall, throw it nice and straight and bring it back. Mm -hmm. And I hurt him really bad. And then after that, I just beat him, I, I beat him, beat him as a decision, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I, I won the USBA, I mean, the, the US title from yeah, the IBF. Yeah. Now, so, so then that launched you into the title fight for the vacant title with James Pritchard. Right. Who had been a heavyweight, kind of a small heavyweight, right. but a big puncher, and he, and he suffered a couple losses, so he came down to cruiserweight. Right. So what was your mindset and game plan going into this world, vacant world title fight? You know what? That fight there, I felt so good training. And I, I, my mindset, my focus... My motivation, my strengths, everything was clicking in the right way for the, all the training. And I only made $15,000 for that fight. Wow. You know? And I remember the guy came to, 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 to interview me. He said, but if you lose, what are you going to do? I said, I'm not losing this fight. When am I, on my porch, he was interviewing me. I said, I'm not going to lose this fight. I don't, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm winning. I'm not losing this fight. And all my friends watched the fight. The guys who I was training for kick, kickboxing in my garage, these guys the lawyers and doctors and, and all that kind of stuff. And I was training my garage, and I, I showed them the videotape. They looked at the fight and they said, James, I don't know, man, this guy really big, right? He got big, the guy was big. Mm -hmm. James Pritchard had muscles all over, yeah, you know? Yeah. He, was, he was big. But I said, man, I said, ah, nah, I'm going I'm to I'm beat him. Yeah. Because I saw him when you double jab his face, he freak out. Mm -hmm. You know, and then my wife came. My wife said, "Oh, forget that muscle. That, he, he, he born with that. He was born with that 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 body." You know, and and my wife said, "You, you can do this. We do that." My wife was real smart too. You know, and then I had Dwayne Sissom, my my boss, get the videotape and and, and, we, and we broke it down. Mm -hmm. See, most boxers back then didn't know how to break down a, a, a fight, and we go from round to round, and he gave me a plan 
and I had to read this plan, and that plan worked perfect, right? And then my wife said, hey, you do this, do this. It was good. I had two good people there that told me a plan, and it worked. And then I should play the videotape on TV, and, and when, he was, when he was boxing, I boxed him on the videotape. And now these guys got, a, got these uh, 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 cameras they can put in their eyes. Oh, yeah, the goggles, was, yeah. Yeah, but I, I would box him on TV. Mm -hmm. I would watch him. I, everybody have mistakes. Yeah. I got how good you are, somebody got a mistake. You so know? The irony is you had this detailed plan worked out. And you won in 24 seconds, which I know there's no way, I don't care what you tell me, that you planned to win that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I you know I tell every kid, hmm. every person that I met after that fight, I said that fight won mine. Because before that fight, I was taking a nap. And, and a nap, I was asleep. I was sleeping, I was taking a nap. And when I, when I, was, when I had a, um, no, when I, I dreamt, that a guy came out of a dark hole, a real dark hole, were dressed with all white, and had that eye, because I saw the eye belt, I saw the belt at the way in, but this guy came out of there and handed me the belt like this. And when I look, when I look sideways, I say, hey, turn around, what color you are? Because I want to see what color, he was white, black, green, or mm -hmm. yellow, or what? And then he turned around, and I, I saw a, f a figure of a face he had no color. And when he was dressed all down with white. I didn't tell nobody this until after the fight. And the guy walked, walked away. And then when the fight came, they said, James, guess what? When we got to the, the arena of the fight, you might have to fight the first fight. Because they got a cloud of rain coming, rain coming because we got to put this on TV live. Mm. And what happened, I don't know how I got dressed. I don't, it seemed like all that stuff was a, 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 mis a misery, right? And it's like, I, I, I don't remember walking down, I had to like, you know how to, uh, some high schools have a, like a stadium and a, and a, and a football field, sure. and lights and all that kind of stuff. Sure. That's what kind of area it was, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't remember walking that far down. I, I don't remember, I don't remember, I remember getting inside the ring, but it felt like a, 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 I, I was gliding through the whole thing, you know? Get to the fight. Even today, somebody asked me again today about that fight, when it happened. I said, man, I watched that fight one time. The punch that I throw, I don't know if I hit him or not. I can't even tell you if I, I don't know what punch hurt him. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I throw a double jab, a hook, or right hand. But I really, I think I, I think the hook hurt him. I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know the right hand hit him. I don't, I don't know what. But it don't seem like I throw a hard punch. It is. It, that was all a blessing from God. That got nothing to do with me. And I'm not getting. I know I'm 59 years old. And you, when you, everybody get when you get older, you want to praise God more because mm -hmm. you think you're going. I, I said it when I was 32. That was a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. That was a blessing from God. Got nothing to do with me. And I tell every kid the same thing. That I got a blessing from God. That's his win. Now, was it that fight where you finally started believing in yourself? Yes. Yes. I believe in I, I, I know I had it. And I was late. When you think about it, I was, I was 32 years old when, when, when I won to Tyler. Right. That was really late from the thing there. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Everything happened when it supposed to happen. I was mature. I understand, I had great people. I didn't go out and buy a brand new house. I kept the house I had. I didn't go out and buy a brand new car. I kept the car I had, you know what I'm saying? And I had a good wife, and I had good people that advised me what to do with my money, right? And I only made that fight but $6,000 clear. Okay, my manager had 20%, my trainer had 10%, okay? And Uncle Sam had I paid him, I think I repaid him 20%, but we got a little bit of thing back. Okay, mm -hmm. got a little bit of money back. I cleared about, about six, six grand or seven grand. That's and crazy. I took that money and went to my friend Rocky Young. At a, uh, he, he, had a, he owned a stock broker. He said, Jane, I said, I want to buy Ford. He said, no, I want you to buy this, this fund called Soldier and Soldier Fund. I still have it. 
I still have that same fun. And that was the best thing in the world. And then when I fought for fights after that, I made 57000 then I made 65000 then I made 75000 And then I, I saved money out, out of each one of them. Then I bought properties. I bought a house. Uh, I bought a house across the street from my house. I kept it for like four or five years, and I, I sold that to buy a, a gym. I, I bought like a, a gym that we, we had for, for a while. And then after that gym, uh, we kept it. Then we bought another gym in the same location, uh, uh, another unit. We bought two units, a, a bigger one, right? Then we kept that. Then I ended up selling the small unit, you know? And then we did that. Then we, we invested the money in, in uh, some land. We bought some land in um, Orlando. And uh, I paid off all, all the credit cards and bought it. My stepson uh, finished college, bought him a car. Then my daughter was going to college, and we got her a car, a brand new car, the second year. You know, um, we we saved. We we really saved. We, we we really saved some money. You know. So do you? As you mentioned, you were 32 right. when you won the title. You definitely, when you look at young fighters today and things going on in boxing, and um, without mentioning any names. You definitely feel that being older, and, and you, you mentioned the word maturity, that that helped you from to avoid some of the pitfalls that some of these young kids fall into today when they win and get all this money at such a young age and they aren't prepared. Yeah, I, I, you know what? But see, if you look at, I mean, even the one this guy told me, Rocky, guy named Rocky, he said, James, don't be afraid because it's people that. Parents left them millions and millions of dollars. They have nothing now. They blow it too because they don't know how to um, control it. He said, James, I get people in here of doctors and lawyers. They don't have money neither. Don't feel bad because I was taking I was taking out thirty thousand dollars to buy a a commercial building, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, my my small one, and I, I used a small house what I sold plus I. To put money down. Say, no, only you're doing transfer money here to here. You're not spending it and throwing it away. But these guys did not learn from the, the black singers. You know, I'm talking about the, you know, the, 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 the black fighters. I, I got to talk about them because, see, the black singers made millions and millions and they did the exact same thing what boxers did and, and black athletes did. You know, you listen to the guy that I listened to, I saw when I went to his um, sparring section, Larry Holmes. And he stopped and he said, what I did, when I made my first million dollars, I thought I was, I was so happy. But then I found out that when I made my first million dollars, Don King sold the fight. He sold the rights in, 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 in the U.S. And he might have got, uh, he sold the rights, he might have got 14 million, right, back then. Then he sold the rights to other countries. Japan, he might have got 10 million. He sold it to the uh, Pakistan or, or, or you're, he might have got five million, you know. But you, you count all the fight, all, all around the world that he sold the fight. The TV guys are making two hundred million, a hundred million dollars, and a billion dollars. Now they're making a billion dollars because now you understand what they're doing now, and that's why Larry Holmes started putting. His, Larry Holmes said, "What I did, I got the best lawyer. I think he had, he had got a lawyer to, to do all his business." He said, and I remember him saying that. He said, "And know what?" He didn't have the education, but he he had some he had some that other people did not have. Some people got education and spirit, they still spent all the money. Some people that all the people you saw that in life they did not read and write, but they can they know how to save. They had some kind of net to save, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that that made them better or not. It's some rich people that can read and write and great, and they and, and they still save. You understand? Know right. But. You learn. I learned from that. I always learned from people that made a mistake. That I didn't want. I, I'm scared now. I don't want to be. Don't have anything, you know. And I have things now. I said, man, now, man, if, if I want to pay this off in the next six years, this is my social security. And you're scared because you worry about somebody could sue you for something and, and come out and get your stuff because you need this for your social security, you know. Right. But you, you, you learn from that. I mean, that's what I, I, you know, I try to learn from that, you know. We have an after-school program now with my wife, with my wife and me. Now my daughter's helping us out. She, she got a master's degree. I'm really happy. 
she's she's the youngest one. Um, then my my stepson that I have raised since he was three years old, he have his um, he get his doctor degree. He got he got his master's degree in uh, in um, education. My daughter, my daughter have her uh, uh, in our um, a nurse in R R N. I'm right. sorry. Then my my son sells stuff on the internet. My and my other stepson sells sell cars on the internet. Um, I'm I'm pretty proud. I mean, I did something that you know. I, I told my kids and told everybody that the, 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 the dumb is gonna stop with me. You know, they stop with when I die, it's done. Because you guys are smarter. Now, do do they? They might be smarter, but I have more. You know, you might be smarter than me, but I have more wisdom than I can. And you know how kids are; they won't listen to the father. You tell them you gotta save this, gotta save this, and I, I just keep pushing it in there. You gotta put this out. You gotta save for this. If you gonna live with me, and you're getting this for free. If I don't see you saving money and you're spending money somewhere else, you're done with me. I'm finished. You better be putting money on this up for, for life insurance or for a mutual fund for 30 years. You'll be done. You'll be finished. You know, the kids these days, houses is, I don't know, man. Houses in Miami, it's it from $200,000. Right. It's, I don't know how kids are going to do it. But they, they'll work, they'll figure it out, because we, we figure it out. Right. You know? Right. But, you know, that's just one thing that uh, I, I uh, try to do and make sure that everything is okay. It's, it's hard, but it's, it's an everyday life, mm -hmm. you know? Well, you definitely sound like a man who had a plan with whatever he was doing. So at, at that point, when you won the title, you were halfway through your career. You were six years in, and you had about six more years to go. Um, you made a couple defenses successfully. Yeah. And then you got in the ring with uh, an Olympic alternate, Al Cole. Uh, yes. What do you remember about that fight? You know, well, I remember about the fight. Of what what really uh, stirred me, it was when um, uh, the director now, I mean, it was, uh, he was a referee. La La Larry Hazard. Larry Hazard. Yeah. He, was, he was a referee uh, back then on my fight. He came in the locker room with Al Cole manager. And, t and looked at me, because they were telling him, because I had a slick way of fighting, and I hit and I, I grabbed, that way he can't hit me. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said, if you grab him, I'm going to take a point away from you. And I'm sitting down like I'm sitting down here, I'm, I'm looking at my trainers, and they didn't say anything. I mean, I, I looked at it, I said, man, if I was them, I'd be telling him, get the, get the heck out of here, right? He, he put his manager in him. I said, man, I, I, if I was doing my training, but I said, my training was calm. I said, don't worry about him, man. Do what you have to do. You know? And I, I remember now, I said, oh, man. When, I, when, he, when he did that, that made a difference. That made a difference a little bit because I said, man, these guys are going to cheat. So it affected your, you mentally, yeah, your, your, your yeah, game plan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, they did. I, I mean, but I, I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is a referee should not do that with one manager. That's why... I said, when I, if I'm retired, I'm going to be a boxing referee. I would not go in to a fighter and tell a fighter by himself with, with his other manager. I don't care if the guy know me right now. This, I, mean, I know a lot of people. If he know me that good, he said, James, you need to go. I, said, I, I would look, look at him. I said, I'm going to tell you something. I don't care who win. You might be my friend. And I might know you. I don't care who win. I said, you, you're talking to the wrong guy because now I got to go tell my commission. I got to go tell my boss what, what, what you just said. Now, if you go get his manager and you, and you tell me, then you come tell me in front of his manager what you want to do, and then I'm going to go tell your fighter the exact same thing. Exact same thing I tell this fighter with you two, I'm going to go tell him the exact same thing too. And you're going to go with me. And this way, I told both of you guys. Because I, I don't think you, it's, I don't care. You know, it, to me, that's what happened. Al Cole won the fight fair and square. Now, the only thing different I think they should do, in my experience, I think in title fights, it's 2017, they sure have instant replay. They don't have to show the instant replay right then, but you have people like the organization and the ref another referee Watch and when, when one minute break, they look at it. If it take them two rounds to look at it, this way, if a guy got cut, 
with a punch or headbutt, and the referee didn't the referee did not see it, then they can look at it through the round and say, okay, he didn't get punched and get a cut. He got an accident in the headbutt with a headbutt. You know what I'm saying? And they yes. could call the right. They could call the right call because Al Cole headbutted me. I'm, I'm not gonna say he tried to do it. I'm not. I would never say that he tried to do it. But now, this time, the mistakes that we made just make it better. Mm -hmm. you, you go instant replay, and you don't have to. You just let it. You know, you know how basketball do like this here. Raise their hands up, or they do something like a some sign they do, mm -hmm. and, and 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 now they're telling the, the you know you know the TV guy. To look at that, that time, put that time there, because right. I don't know if he stepped on the line or he did a three. Right. You understand? Know yes. And see, boxing is just do the same thing, but you cannot do it with all the fights, but with big fights, right? Title fights, right? You there's, can do there's that. There's television at those fights, so right, right. The it, ability it, it, is there, right? And then what will happen? I don't care how great you are. The, the NFL do it. The, 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 the NBA do it, baseball boxing, it. baseball do it, everybody doing it. You will make a referee good because what happened, he might make a call because what he saw. He, it's not a bad call. He, he, got, a third, he got a third eye. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I never heard nobody talk about that. No. To me, all the men you talk about it. Now, now people might say that that's the idea. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, there are, there's uh, the WBC is doing that. Yeah, um, but the other organizations aren't, and they're yeah. calling for for it for that same reason. What you're saying, yeah, to learn to prevent, uh, you know, poor decisions or or bad calls. Yeah, the headbutt versus a punch that caused a cut. Right, things like that. But I don't think they should do it for scorekeeping. Of who got who won that round? She's not doing for that. No. Okay, what these guys that sit around the table, the judges that sit around the table. They see what they see, because see, there might be a different angle. He might he might not see he might not see that punch right. on, on a different angle. But you know what? The other two guys saw it. Mm -hmm. you, you know. Right. But I, it, it's things that got slip, got slip, or something right. like that. Knockdowns, fouls, right, things like right, that. Right. Right. They so should do that. Know. Yeah. So, you're a referee now. Yes. When did that idea come into your mind? While you were still fighting, or did you? Have a plan for when your career ended. What do I do next? You know what? When I was kickboxing, I was refereeing pro kickboxing fights. Cause back then, they didn't have, the state did not have uh, kickboxing in the uh, thing. They didn't have it. Yeah, yeah. We, we 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 had our own referees, and I was doing that. I was doing it back then. You know. So it seemed natural, like yeah, natural it was good. Progression. yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I was watching. I said, you know what? I think I'm gonna do this. You know, and uh, and I told him I asked, I asked for it. I, I trailed a couple of times, and I did. I got lucky. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a lucky thing. I got them guys that helped me out. The older guys from the, the Florida boxing um, the judges, Max and uh, what, what a white guy named Bill Collins. Bill, Bill, um, I can't say his name, but you know his name is Bill. But mm -hmm. he he from he, he from South he from uh, uh, South Florida. Okay. You know, but them guys were really good. The guys were nice. And really good. I know I missed somebody's name. I'm sorry, but them guys helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. You know. So, do you feel um, maybe it's essential or it's definitely a help as a referee to have been a fighter in the ring? I, I think so. You know, I don't. I'm, I'm not gonna say that it made me perfect, but I can see other things that other guys don't see. And be honest with you, when I first came there. Uh, <laughs> Except with Max and Bill, because the Bill coaches amateur boxers back then, and uh, Max knew Max boxed around boxers too. Uh, I, I I was shocked what a lot of people know. You understand? I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm really shocked. But I was there to help, because and I asked them to, you know, to, to tweak me too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's so you didn't come in with a swelled head. You right, could, you no. could offer help as well as learn. Right, and then and they, they told me, Jane, move to the side. I don't mind uh, uh, um, if I'm at a fight, and I tell all the judges, if I'm in your way, tell me I'm in your way. Hey, move. If if I can move, if the fighters, if I'm watching the fight throwing punches, and I have to sit that position, I will sit that position. But if I know that I can move and go to the other side, I move, go somewhere else, then. I, I will move, you know, for the judge, because the judge have, have to have a right to have good vision too, you know? 
And um, sometimes, you know, I try to see what the judge is at and, and try to stay out of the way, you know. So as well as the judging, um, what else is James Waring doing today? I'm doing an after-school program, a free after-school program in Miami-Dade County uh, with kids from grade 5 to 12. What I like to do is, is do that program, 5 to 12, and I like to have uh, do a martial art program and a, and, a, and a boxing program together. We know we have the place to, you know, to do it. I got, I got turned down uh, three times. I wrote, I wrote three grants. I didn't write it. My wife wrote it. And we got turned down, you know, about three, you know, three times. But I'm not mad because I got turned down. Now, I did something wrong, maybe in the grant. I, didn't, I don't think I did something wrong in the grant, but we did some little things wrong. <coughs> and then, you know, they, they had what they, who they want to have. But now, I'm gonna, we're, trying to, we're going to try it again for the fourth time. Mm -hmm. Now, the fourth time, in no way I'm going to lose the fourth time. I, you know, <coughs> now I might, I might. You know, get turned out again. But you know what? I mean, it's not meant meant to be. But I do like to put a, a, a boxing program and kickboxing program together. Okay. You know, because it's too many kids over that area that <clears throat> that don't have no, nothing to do. And I think if I could teach them a skill, and they don't have to fight, they don't have to fight. You could come in there every day and learn a skill. Then you could be a teacher one day. Because them guys are gonna be the coaches. I'm gonna teach them to be the coaches, mm -hmm. and then when they go to college or when they do something, then they could go to college and teach it too, and they could be good. They could be good people, and you, oh yes, I'm gonna get some bad people in there, which I never had in there in life. But you know what? That's life. But if I could turn that kid around, or turn that person around, I'd be happy. I get an ex, ex uh, athlete that football, basketball, or track runner want to learn how to box. He could be a. And, and, and you know what? It's a lot of guys I train at Tropical Park, and they lawyers and doctors and, and commissioners and senators. I train these guys. They guys come to me. I see them all the time. Hey, James, thank you. I don't know who the kids are, but you know what? They say thank you, and, I, and I'm glad. You know, and and that's my dream, man. That's what my dream do to make keep it going. Somebody gave it to me for free. When I was a kid and risked my hikes, I learned how to swim for free. I learned how to play basketball for free. I learned how to play flag football for free. You know, I learned all that stuff. You know, I had a summer job called Team Clean. We walked the neighborhood, clean the neighborhood up. You know, I, I, I learned that. I, I got it for free. Mm -hmm. and, and people say, oh, we can't do it for free now. We got to charge kids. It's a shame. The tax money that we get, and I tell people all the time, the people that we should be watching is our people that will be voting in in our, in our community. You know, I'm not saying they're stealing, but they're they not putting the money in the, at the right way. Mm -hmm. A guy come to your house every four years, knock on your door, hey, vote for me, vote for me. And then he, when he win, and you look, and when he win, you look at him and go, you want to talk to him, you can't get five yards close to him. Because he got his, all his um, aides around here and say, hey, I can't, you can't talk to him, you got to come talk to me. Mm -hmm. But he came to my house and knocked on my door and asked me for my vote. I talked to him then, but see, that's the problem. And that's why I told people, when I won a world title, I came home, I had a party in my house, and I told all the people, when you're my friend, when I won this world title, and if you're not my friend, when I won this world title, my name is still James Waring. If you want to call me champ, call me champ. But my name is James Waring. This belt don't make a difference. And that's what I told them. And I want to be the same guy. You know, I want to be the exact same guy. I want to be the James guy. Because you, you won a, a commission and now you with big guys and people buying you off. But you know what? You're not working for the people. You're not working for the people. And you should. Because like me and you got a job. We come home. We're tired. We don't want to go to a commission meeting. We believe in everything that we, we sit there and we oh, this guy, I hope he do the right thing. And this guy doing his own interest. Everything he's doing is for his own interest. And we put him in there for to help everybody. Ain't no different of me or you or middle class people or upper middle class people. My kid should get the exact same treatment if a kid is poor. And I should not pay more because I make more, you know, because I might got more bills than him. I got my, my house, my house. 
and my taxes might be more on more him, and, I, and and make me feel make me poor, make me feel poor because I got to pay more taxes than him. <laughs> yeah, you look the same. Yeah, it's the same. You know what I'm saying? You help every kid. Who cares? If a kid came out of school, went out of school, all kids are still good. If, if he's 21, 18 years old, and he want to come to that boxing program, and he's not going to school, I should give him an opportunity. It might change his life. He might go to a trade school after that and be a cop or be a doctor. Be, you never know. Mm -hmm. Well, paying it forward is a great, Yo, a great it, theme, and, and if, if more people did it who are in your position, uh, this country and this world would be in a lot better shape. You know what? I think a lot of people. You know what? A lot of people are doing it. Right. A lot of athletes are doing it. There's room um, for more of that. Yeah. It's more, you know what? If I did my five, and he did his five, or he do he do his hundred. I'm sorry. <laughs> and if the other guy do a hundred, it's we we just put in we put dots in there, and we get a lot of dots all over the world. That's what we're doing. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are doing it. Yeah. James, I want to thank you for your time and, and uh, talking with us. Any any uh, quick message to uh, fans who who remember you still and, and uh, <laughs> people out there? I want to say thank you. I, I really thank. I'm really proud that you asked me for this interview, and I feel good. I wish you. I hope I you understand me. On this. I hope I didn't talk too fast because I do have a speech problem. But. Um, uh, I wish you understand what you know what I was saying and something like that. I really do, and I really appreciate you. It do you know what? It feel good. And I tell people yesterday, and I tell people all the time, at a restaurant, they ask me for a picture, and I stand up, I, I, I give him a, a guy a picture, and the guy asks me, man, I, I said, no, man. He asked me for that picture, and it feel it feel good because everybody watching me, it feel good. The same way he got the picture, I feel good too. Uh -huh. <laughs> you understand? Know I was say hi to me. I feel good too. You know, a fan should be, a fan is a fan, and you treat them nice all the time. Even when you don't want to take a picture, I know if, if sometimes it gets too bad because too many people, you have to leave, you're with your wife and kids, you have to go, then you should have your wife come and say, we have to leave, we, we have somewhere to go. Yeah. But don't, just don't say no to everybody. Take pictures of at least two or three of them or four of them, mm -hmm. and this way they say, now nah, his wife pulled him away. But guess what, you, you're not bad. You're not doing nothing bad. You know what I'm saying? Make your wife a bad one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. But, but these guys think they 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 untouchable. But guess what? One day we get older. That's right. And nobody might come at all. That's and right. how you going to feel then? Not as good as you're feeling now, I right. guess. Right. 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 All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you very James. much. Thank you.